Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today we have this new splash page teasing the Rogue and Beast pre release event. Now, this does confirm our suspicions that the tokens that we're collecting in the pre release event missions are only going to be for Rogue and Beast. We will have to find out later how to get biometrics for, you know, Wolverine, Jean Grey, uh, Storm, Cyclops, and another new character, boys. Yes. We got confirmation earlier today, back to back, new character, not Eric Lencher, but actually Max Eisenhard, Magneto. A lot of people on the live stream did not realize that Magneto, or Max, has a lot of aliases, one of which is Eric Lencher, the one that you probably know from the X-Men movies. They're both the same person. This is not a different iteration of Magneto, he just goes by a lot of different names. And that also means a lot of potential uniforms, boys. The White King, for example. Anyways, guys, looking at Magneto, I see two things of note. His mutant skills and abilities sound amazing. Magnetism manipulation and magnetic force fields sounds very cool. Lots of bubbles, lots of potentially very awesome uh, visual effects. I think they've done with the likes of Doctor Strange and the Freeze animation. Uh, gravity control, magnetic sphere, magno, magnetokinesis, that's a new word, magnetic storm and magnetic maelstrom uh, remind me of Thor and how he has different kinds of maelstroms and storms and stuff like that. But hopefully Magneto will be a little bit stronger than Thor. The only kind of warning I would give you guys is for whatever reason his power level is listed as alpha, which is not very good when you compare him to the likes of Phoenix, Jean Grey being an omega. You know, I think Magneto's a little bit stronger than Storm, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't know my canon as well as some of the other guys. You can correct me on it, but that is the only thing. Um, but I'm super happy to get a villain, and I hope that we can see a few more villains come to the game. I know a lot of people are, you know, still pulling for the likes of Colossus, Nightcrawler, um, Emma Frost, and other ones, but we'll have to see what comes of it. More importantly, guys, I wanted to take a step back from all of this excitement about the X-Men because I am personally very happy that we're getting the X-Men, but I wanted to say a couple of things uh, about the game as it currently um, exists and what the X-Men patch is going to mean for the game moving forward. Uh, you know, I don't want to already start asking for something else or maybe appear that I'm complaining about anything, but I do think that there are, shout out to the motorcycle one more time, there are some notices that we should put on Netmarble um, and that we should be anticipating for the game moving forward because the X-Men update does symbolize a lot more. On the one hand, I'm very excited, very happy to know that we have this whole new universe of mutants at our fingertips that we can bring into the game. You know, we already have the most uh, characters of any Marvel game and counting, and it's going to jump exponentially. We're going to get at least, guys, we're at least expecting seven new characters for this update, potentially 11. That's huge. However, the downside to that is the existing characters. So I wanted to take the, the time now to talk to you guys about the existing characters and the balance and what Netmarble can do to bring up the level of characters to meet or match or maybe even output some of the X-Men. Because as I see it, there are three ways that this can go down theoretically. Theoretically, the X-Men can come into the game and they can be worse than the average character in this game, which would be maybe someone like Giant Man. Not bad, not great. Serviceable, definitely if you upgrade him, he can do nice things. There's one, uh, you know, there's one line of thinking where the X-Men come in and on average, they're about as strong as Giant Man. Probably not what we're all hoping for. The second possibility is that the X-Men come in and they're on average worse than Giant Man. Again, not likely, not what we want, but potentially, you know, the truth. If you look at the new Avengers update, some of those characters came in and they weren't very good. It took a long time for them to get their day in the sun with Alliance Conquest. The third and most likely option for the X-Men coming into the game is that they will be on average better than most of the characters in this game, which would further push those characters down and suppress their utility in any game mode outside of having fun, uh, recommended characters for Timeline, Shadowlands, if you really want to torture yourself, and Alliance Conquest as fodder for your big guns. Now, I do want to say that I am happy for things like Alliance Conquest. It has shed light on characters who previously did not have a lot of uh, light shed on them and who previously were thought of to be pretty trash. Uh, 
characters that we didn't think were good for much are now formidable in Alliance Conquest. And that's great. That has renewed some of the talk and conversation and value in these characters. But there is still get don't get it wrong guys don't don't make a mistake here there are still a lot of characters in this game that need an update and speaking frankly netmarble knows how to update characters captain america is a perfect example he went from hero to superhero with his latest character balancing and he didn't even need to be rebalanced but now people are thinking i need to tier 2 captain america dude is a beast and yeah you're right he is a beast especially on game modes where he's auto played because he's so tanky and so unbelievably hard to kill. Black Widow got a similar update. If Netmarble can do for Black Widow and Captain America to other characters, if they can do for those what they what they can do for everyone else, then we're set. But it's just about making that a priority for them and I think after the X-Men update it should be a priority. There are other priorities in the game right now. I do think there needs to be a conversation about new game modes, PvP game modes, stuff like that. But I think this is one of the more important conversations because the X-Men primarily represent characters. And character collection is the primary function of this game. This is not a PvP game. This is not a, a competitive game primarily. It's primarily a game of collecting and seeing who can collect them all. Like Pokemon. And I'm glad to go and throw balls at Wolverine and the other X-Men and catch them and add them to my shelf. But I also want the existing characters on my shelf to feel the way that Captain America feels now. And trust me, there's a long list of characters. Initially, my list of characters, from, from a glance, you know, with some thought put into it, stands at 37. These 37 characters need some kind of rebalancing, some kind of patch, some kind of update. Some of them need more, some of them need less, but they all need a little bit of love to a lot of love. But I wanted to whittle down the list and be more serious and give you guys a more robust group of names. These 18. So we're chopping the list basically in half. These 18 characters sorely need an upgrade like Captain America. And I think that they, that they need to get it right after the X-Men because the longer you wait, the longer these characters just float into oblivion. Nobody is upgrading these characters unless they love them to death and will then be disappointed by them when they can barely perform in game modes, like I said, outside of Timeline, Shadowland, and Alliance Conquest. So I think this is an important conversation that we need to have. Uh, let me know what you guys think of these 18 characters. Let me know what you think Netmarble could do for each of these 18 characters because I have my own thoughts, but of course, together, guys, we're much stronger than apart. And of course, guys, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.